Welcome to the most beautiful combination padlock that I came across so far. I first saw it on Swindler's channel where he decoded this lock and described it as a tricky lock to decode and I can just follow his opinion. And so I got myself one of these and I have to say that this is really nice. It has a perfect finish. Everything here is round, smooth, no sharp edges. It's very well made. And even the bottom here is rounded, so when you put it on a flat surface, it can dance, it can wiggle. <laughs> it's just a funny lock. The only odd thing on this lock is the fact that the indicator line is on the left side and not on the right. When we compare it to an Avis, which I believe represents mm, the majority of locks of this kind, it has the indicator line on the right side while this has it on the left side, which could be an advantage for left-handed people. But other than that, I have no idea why they broke with a standard to put it on the right side. Anyhow, I want to decode it. So, yeah, it's a tricky lock to decode. You really have to take uh, care to understand the feedback. Um, it has false gates. Every second position on each wheel is a gate and we've got only one true gate, of course. Yeah, let's start decoding. I changed the code by turning the shackle at 180 degree and pushing it down. It has no spring tension to the shackle, so this makes it really easy to change the code. Other locks with spring tension on the shackle um, require the shackle to be pushed down while changing the code and sometimes the shackle comes up and then you change the code and it's actually locked up in the open state. So this is not the case on that lock. It's very easy to change the code without too much effort. And we just want to make sure that every position, every wheel is in a gate, not in a gate, sorry, at a whole number and not in between two numbers and the shackle comes out and it's closed again and we shuffle the wheels and we are good to go for a decoding session. So let's start. I pull on the shackle and I will turn all the wheels so that each wheel is in a gate no matter if true or false. So this is loose, this is bound and it's now stuck so that's a gate Check the first again. Ah, it's also in a gate. Now this is in a gate. Last one is also in a gate. You probably heard the shackle coming out a little bit every time I found a gate. And beside of the uh, feedback from the shackle, you also have the feedback from the wheels that every wheel now is stuck at a number. And now our task is to find the difference between true and false gates. And therefore I pull in the shackle again and test every wheel. I wiggle around the current number and see which of the wheels is the tightest. The one that um, has a bit of play could be um, a true gate or a wheel that is currently not binding. We don't know yet but we go for the wheel that has the least amount of play. And if you don't know, you just guess. And I would say the last needs change. And uh, for changing, I push the shackle in all the way. I change by two positions because I know every second position is a gate. And then I pull out again the shackle and test again the wheels. And looks like we have changed the third wheel's um, binding state. It's now loose again. It's really loose. That means that this number here is worse than the number before. So let's check with five. It's still tight here, but it's a little bit better here on the third wheel. Okay, now the third wheel is binding more, but the last wheel is really not binding a lot. So maybe 
we don't get much out of the last wheel by now. Okay, let's let's continue with the other wheels. I think the second wheel also needs a change. First wheel is relatively loose. The last wheel isn't binding a lot, but the second is still tight. You want to make sure that after every change of a position of a wheel, you wiggle all wheels left and right so that you make sure really they are in a gate and not a little bit off. So if you have a, gate, a heavy wheel that is a bit off, um, you're losing all the feedback. So which wheel do I choose? I think I choose the last wheel. Now I choose the second. If it becomes mushy, so that it can be turned a little bit left and right from the current state, although it's um, it's quite a bit of effort, um, it might mean that uh, it's a true gate and these mm, yeah these these this this kind of play that you have, although it's hard to turn is because the inner wheels are pushed together and um, provide resistance. If you pull really hard on the shackle and you still can turn the, the wheel a little bit left and right from the actual position, that's a good sign that the resistance comes from the inner wheels and not from a false gate. So I think this, yeah, this might be a true gate here on the second wheel, but the first wheel is really stiff, so I change it. It's still very tight, but I test every wheel again. It's still tight. The others are kind of mushy. Now it's tight again. And it's open. Yeah, so it's a little bit trickier than other locks, for example, uh, this Abus, but it's a lot of fun and um, yeah, you are required to um, carefully observe the lock um, talking to you. You not only go by loose or tight wheels, you also have to um, look more carefully in the way it is loose or in the way it is um, bound up. Because if it's loose, it can mean that it's currently not binding or you have a true gate. And if it's tight, it can mean that um, it's in a false gate or in a true gate, but the inner wheels are pushed together and providing uh, some resistance. Yeah, it's a tricky lock, but it's also a very fun lock. It will uh, for sure improve your decoding skills when you work on it. And it's just a beautiful lock to look at and to hold in your hands and maybe carry around in your pocket so that you can play with it every time you like. Anyhow, that's it. Um, I hope you had fun observing me decoding this lock. And um, until we meet again, thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and decoding. Cheers and bye bye.